going to have questions. Sir is going to answer the questions. It's going to just be questions and answers straight from Sir Nasty, somebody who gives you 100% of the truth in his life and his music, but now he's just going to give it to you uh, with his words also, however you're watching it. Uh, so what you think, Nas? We're doing mass on or mass off? Mass off. Mass off, then. Let's do that. All right, so we're going to mask off. And uh, just to give you an idea of the format for those who are watching, I'm just going through A through Z for each letter of the alphabet. I'm going to ask Sir Nasty a question, and he's just going to give us his honest answer, and we're just going to run it like that. Uh, so like I said, wherever you're watching that, uh, as we do these, because we do plan on doing these more often with Graveyard Entertainment and Sir Nasty, but as we do them, uh, if you've got questions that you want to ask Sir Nasty yourself, whether it's something to do with something in the music or you know just something you want to know how he feels about maybe a certain topic i don't know uh you can comment you can tweet you can message whatever you do whatever social media thing you do you can do it we'll look at it and the next time we come around we'll throw that in there but let's jump right into it sir nasty sad uh, i'm starting with letter a the word activity how do you feel about being active on social media a lot of people want to know that how I feel about it as far as myself or other people yeah, doing Yeah, nah. Well, you know what? Let's go into both. Where you want to start at? You want to start with you? Matter. You want to start with others? It don't matter. J jump in. Whatever you want to start with. If that's what you do, uh, do you. You know, that's what we say. But don't expect me to do you. I mean, social media cool for those that use cool, you know, to do cool shit with. But uh, active on there, I mean... Uh, like I said, you do what you do. When it come to us, when it come to me personally, uh, I, I won't be that active on there. I got too much action and activity going on in my personal life. So, uh, you know, I can't, I can't, I can't do a a, a, a homemade reality show of myself. I feel you on that. So, but we know that you know you got accounts. You got Twitter. You got Instagram. You got Facebook. Those are the main three. And people usually want to know, you know, are you, when you're on there, why why aren't you on there? And you may have already kind of answered this, but I'm going to just ask it again. Why aren't you on there the way other people are? Why don't you live on social media the way a lot of people do? I don't live on social media the way other people do because I live a real life. I mean, that's just how I feel about it. You know, we, we, we come from an area where... You know, when we said we had friends, them friends became brothers, and them brothers remained silent. You can't call me your friend. I've never met you in person. I mean, I know that's how the game go. I got 500,000 friends on whatever site or whatever social media thing, but at the end of the day, are them really your friends? So, I mean, I'm not on there like that because, like I said, I'm living real life. Uh, I'm too busy putting in work with the music. Um, and my, my real fans, they know that. And uh, that's how it go. That's how we're going to keep it G, man. Uh, that's what's up. Hey, you like it, I love it. Uh, and just so everybody knows, all the music is available no matter what social media outlet you use. If you get on there, whether it's a certain nasty page, a graveyard entertainment page, you can get to the music. You know, because at the end of the day, that's what it's about. It's about the music. It's about the music. Moving on, let it be. A boy versus a man. What do you feel like the difference is in your mind? This is just all you, all your opinion. What do you feel the difference is between a boy and a man? Well, <clears throat> honestly, since since we're being personal with it, uh, boy versus man in my mind? Yeah. A boy, he feels like he has to have some type of company around him. So sometimes, you know, boys act out for validation from whether it be girls or whether it be parents, home, whatever it is. A boy will uh, ask permission before he say something to ask you how you feel about it because, you know, he probably don't want anything to go wrong. I can go on with those analogies, but a man, you know, like I said, we've been, since we've been personal, the inner me, the boy versus the man, the difference is the man don't give a fuck about what you think. The man don't give a fuck how you feel. And the man not asking permission. 
And as my uncle said, the man right here. <laughs> that's what's up. Moving on, let us see. Collaboration. Why don't you collaborate a lot on your project? You know, you got, I, I, I don't, I can't even say the exact number, but let's just say you got, you got more than, let's just say 60 or 70 projects. You know, right. people call them albums, mixtapes. I like the name Street Album. I like that name. That's uh, what they are. They albums for the street. So why why don't you have a lot of collaborations on those? You have collaborated in the past with other artists, but it's not done often. And you know, just why is that? <clears throat> uh, for one, uh, I don't know who I would collab with. Uh, sometimes I feel like I stand alone. Like I say, far as this underground thing go, I know it's some more underground kings and queens out there, and I'm waiting on them. If they reach out. You know, we'll we'll make it happen. But I I I when I hear a beat, or if I'm working on a song, uh, I never hear the song and say, "Oh man, I hear so and so on it." Uh, it'd be cool if I do this with so and so. We we just we build, we start from scratch. If you and I was gonna do a song, we pick the beat. If you don't, uh, we get the topic, and then we just start from there. But as far as collaborations go on my own projects, it's because it's my own project. Uh, you know. I'm in the. I'm, I'm right now working on doing a murder house compilation that'll bring some artists that I do actually care about and you know that I would collaborate with. So we're working on that, and that's my opinion. That's how collaborations go. I mean, I could be on a label with 50 artists. All of them ain't going on my album. Uh, I feel like your album, your your mixtape, your music should be your reflection, your opinion your thoughts alone you know so long story short that's why i collaborate with nasty man <laughs> i write the music he record you know that's how they go all right that's what's up all right letter d demon <coughs> and demons Inc. all Repeat right that. demon uh -huh. and demons Inc. Uh -huh. what do those words what do they mean to you but then also what do they mean as far as your music just give us a little history about that word and then also that uh i guess you call it that company demon thing what does that mean to you we, we being honest right oh yeah 100 percent. no this is you know we don't care how you feel i mean no. anybody feel about it no uh honestly demons inc that means nothing to me that was a company that was our company name and you know i was told to change it so I did uh, plus everything that went with Demons Inc um, I didn't bring it over to Graveyard we didn't just change the name we changed everything we changed from the inside out but since the painting the house is the furniture and everything inside still fucked up so you know we just rebuilt the whole empire you know bigger rooms less people it's comfortable now <laughs> Just legs out, man. <laughs> <coughs> it's comfortable now. As far as the demon, I get a lot of criticism about that, but <clears throat> I'm not going to explain myself to anybody. I'm a grown damn man. My real fans know. New fans, old fans. If you if you if you a new fan, then you got to do your history and, and and listen to the old stuff. And if you been down and you don't know about the new stuff, you need to play catch up. With that being said, I've been the demon on the microphone for a long time, um, ever since I was a little nasty. Uh, like I said, on the microphone, you know, everybody got alter egos or aliases. You know, I've been Jason Voorhees since I was young. I, I've been ad adopted that name, so I couldn't think of anything else I could be on the microphone. I, I mean... You got this guy saying he, he he a bad guy. This guy saying he he a monster. This guy saying he he a bad. This guy say I mean everybody's picking their you know this guy might be a drag. And so I say, well, what where do I go? Then you know what I I just be the demon, not a demon. You feel me? Not a demon. The demon on the microphone. And Google it. Shit, don't ask me. I said I'm the I said I'm the demon on the microphone. Now it's your job to go find out what that meaning means and why.
why I say I'm bad on the mic. And for anybody who does want to do research, uh, any Demons Inc. projects are still available on datpiff.com. A lot of that didn't make it to uh, the Spotify's and the iTunes, and now we're on Tidal. So if you want to get those older mixtapes, Street Projects, which are still great in my opinion, you can always find those on that piff. Moving on to letter E, <coughs> education. Uh, what do you feel like your education level is? Oh. Uh, <laughs> like, I don't know, it sound like I'm applying for a gig. I mean, uh, hey, you, you might be, you. whoever's watching, you might be applying for them to say, hey, man, well, why should I be a certain nasty fan? I in mean, my opinion, it should be because of the music, but they might want other reasons. I think education is important. I mean, I don't know how young the viewers or the fans might be, but I mean, to be honest, they can't. That's something they can't take from you. I got a lot of street knowledge, but I wish I would have had more sense to do what I needed to do in school. I could maneuver better, and that's just real. But at the end of the day, it is what it is. If you have dropped out, you know, I think going back and getting your GED is important. I did it, just to show my kids it's important. I can't tell them to do something I ain't got them done. That's true. You that, lead by example. You know, I consider myself, as my queen say, highly intelligent. And uh, that's how that go. I can count my money, my clips. So, there we are. That's how I feel about that. That's why I met with that. Cool. All right, letter F, fans. How do you feel about your fans? And then after that, how do you feel about fans of music in general? How I feel about my fans? Your fans. Fans of your music, fans of Sir Nasty. You a fan of Sir Nasty? I love you with all my heart. I'm a real nigga. I don't take nothing like anybody ever had any tape to a CD to now you got the music on your phone or whatever if you fuck with me I fuck with you that's why I do it I mean um, I know you know as we get bigger we gonna have fans that come in that aren't really fans and that's my real fan job to keep them out now I'm not saying you know we can't get new fans, but you know a real fan from a fake fan. You know, understand what I'm saying? You either listening to the music or you ain't. Don't go get my shit because you heard everybody else playing it and you think that's cool. That's that's why you know that's why I met with my fans. Uh, the ones that stayed around. You just watch what you're watching is you watching me grow. You get to witness this. I don't go through nothing. I don't put on the record. So when you see me, you try to figure out how, how has he went through all that. And he's still putting in music. Out. Like I said, I never go through anything I can't share with my fans. The, the day I go through something, I can't tell my fans, the people that want to hear what's going on with me, I'll stop. All right, letter G, gangsta versus gangster. All right, I just want to know, what does gangsta mean to you, and what do you think it means to the world? Just from what you see and what you've heard. I think gangsta is just a, I was going to call it a hood way, or a ebonic way to say gangster. I mean... I've spelled G-A-N-G-S-T-A in a song, but I'm definitely G-A-N-G-S-T-E-R, hands down. So, I mean, I think the world think a gangster is a gangster, like nigger and nigger. White people think they can say nigger around me because I'm a nigger. But in a way, uh, the world think Gangster is selling dope. That's gangster. I told a gun. That's gangster. Gangster is a it's a way of life and it's a state of mind. And I, I honestly can't even get into details about too much on that. But let's just say 
Everybody that say they're a gangster, they ain't a gangster. Everybody who, I guess, uh, what you call it, interacting in criminal activity ain't gangster either. Uh, an example of a gangster to me is uh, everybody telling you, hey, get, uh, get a real job or... Uh, if you haven't blown before you 26 is over or you know take the spikes off take the chains off take the scars off if you say you, you a demon then you, you must worship Satan see a gangster would take all that into consideration and try to be what it is they want him to be but a gangster Look them dead in their face and say, fuck you, I'm here. Deal with it, feel me, or kill me. That's gangsta right there. That is gangsta, I'll take it. All right, letter H, humble. What does being humble mean for you? Being humble for me is looking over my shoulder, recognizing where I came from, counting my blessings, uh humble for me is to and it is what it is to know I can have any bitch I want but choose not to I just spoil my queen uh, that's humble being humble to me is knowing you can destroy people career before it even start but you don't humble is not calling out everybody in your city. Knowing you could. Knowing it all be facts. But you choose not to. You kill them a different way. You make them watch you eat. And they wonder how is he eating. And then when they find, well, they never can find out how you're eating. But they want to know what you eat, then you show them what you're eating. And they want to eat with you. You don't help hunt for the food, you don't eat. You didn't ride with the king, you don't sit at the table with the king's men. Yeah, I'm a king. I'm an underground king. I'm a son of God. If, if that offend you, you can stop fucking with me right now. Letter I, insulting. How do you feel about people who might say that they're insulted by your lyrics, by the things you say, by the words in your songs? How do how you feel about that? If I offend you, you've offended me. <laughs> I've said that in a song before. That's how I feel about I that. I you have. Uh, stop listening if you're insulted. Or do something about it. I mean, it's the only way I'm going to say how I feel. You know, it's, I'm a man first. It's, it's not about playing tough. I know tough guys. A lot of them dead. I don't, I don't have to play tough. But I'm going to say how I feel. You got to respect me as a man. Or we're going to have an issue from the, from the beginning. So, you know, that's why I'm at with that. All right, this next one, letter J, kind of circles back around something we kind of touched on earlier but <coughs> Jason Voorhees right what does that name mean to you what does it mean in your music <coughs> Jason Voorhees that name means to me it means it's, it's a horror movie character from the 80s um, you know the story so I don't have to promote it uh, I watch stuff and I look at stuff differently and that's what make me unique, I feel. Long story short, when I saw the movie, well, when people saw the movie, all they saw was a, a guy that was in the woods killing off little white people that were making out. I, on the other hand, wanted to know, well, what did they do to him for him to come up out that water like that? And um, that's when I got interested. 
and I was like, yeah, I can dig this. This relates to my life. So I started fucking with Jason Voorhees. I am Jason Voorhees. And I mean, it's a lot of other rappers. They, you know, bring Jason into their music as they do Freddie and Child's Play, you know, Chuck and all that. And, and that's fine. That's cool if that's what you want to do. But there's only one fucking Jason Voorhees. And he wears the black mask. Stay in your lane. I stay in my lane. Like I said, respect me as a man first. I got the history to prove. I've been Jason Voorhees. And every Friday the 13th is my day. Dropping music. Enjoying life a little extra than I already do. It's personal. Everything we do is personal. So when somebody say it ain't that serious, you better be careful who you saying that to. Speaking of Friday the 13th, we got one coming up April 13th, 2018. You got new music? Always. What are we dropping? Disturbed 7? Disturbed 7. The Black Inferno. Friday the 13th, 2018. I mean, if you're a certain nasty fan, you're going to get what you, what you, what you, what you want. That, that lyrical cocaine, that crack. It's going to be some hard on there, going to be some soft on there. I know the ladies like the soft. Sometimes they like the hard. i give you what you want, baby. But it's all lyrical crack. Real rapper. Real rap. All right. Hey, Kendrick Lamar, you familiar with his music? Familiar so, with the artist? Very familiar with the artist. And I'm, I'm, I'm semi-familiar with his music. How would you say uh, you feel about him as an artist? Because, you know, personally, I know you don't know him, but as an artist, from what you've heard or listened to, you know, what, what do you think about Kendrick Lamar? If, I guess as he compares to other rappers that are still doing it now. I think he cool. It's it hard, it hard to be from the West Coast and not be cool, man. I, I fucks with them niggas over there. Uh, as an artist, like I said, um, just being real, I, I, I've i heard some of his stuff. I, I've never heard any garbage. So hands down, dude can rap. Uh, and anybody uh, that's going to go at him, they better go at him with all they got. I don't, I don't, I don't I, yeah. Yeah, he, I like him. All right, letter L, the word lion. Uh, what I'm talking about on this is, in a lot of your songs, I hear the phrase, bold as a lion. Mm -hmm. What does that mean to you? What does it mean when you say it in your music? I say it in my music the same way I try to live it in my life. Uh, bold as a lion. I say the lion is ready. I mean, I feel like this world is a jungle. I mean, I come from the concrete jungle, so... You have to be a lion in the jungle. What else you gonna be? Snakes get turned into shoes and belts. You know what I mean? Yeah. A lot of that other shit get ate. Ain't nobody eating the lion, man. The lion eat, and he makes sure every, everything that he cares about eat. So, you know, I look at that, and, and you know, I try to live my life that way. Not as that, not as wild like that, but you know, <laughs> I mean. The haters want it, but just, you know, as a metaphor, you know, I'm a lion. And uh, the lion is ready. Well, letter M, the mixtape killer. Now, what does that mean? And then after that, this might, might take a second for you to think about, but what's your favorite <coughs> mixtape that you've done? So first, just tell me what the mixtape killer means. It's simple. Mixtape Killer came from, like I said, my first, uh, the first music I put out on CD was uh, all instrumentals. I believe I had a few original beats, but it was a lot of instrumentals. You know, Dr. Dre is the greatest, so I, of course I had, you know, his instrumentals on there. And, um, you know, my fans, my people would say, man, you killing these beats. 
And I'm like, well, that ain't cool. Then they started saying, hey, man, you, you killing these man, type. I was like, well, fuck it then. There he, here I is. <laughs> the mixtape killer. So, you know, it was simple as that. Mixtape killer, you heard it here. All right, next, the letter N. What else could we use for that letter other than the word N? Yeah. You know, there's people that want to know that maybe don't know. Where did that name come from? What's the origin of the name Nasty? And what was your first rap name? I raved by NWA, Ghetto Boys, Uncle Snoop. My first rap name was Sea Dog. <laughs> like for real. D O double G, nigga. Just like on. Just like on. Just like on. But um, I got my name from my mama, man. It's that simple, huh? I told her I was going to rap. She laughed. She heard what I wrote. At that point, wasn't no stopping it. She, you know, like I just told you who I was raised by. Rest in peace, Big and Pop. And I, you know, the list go on. But I was raised by real niggas when it come to that rapping. So I could only rap about real nigga, little nigga real shit. <laughs> <laughs> little nigga shit, but still real shit. I, I, I didn't stand at the bus stop and dance. I didn't necessarily want to roll it either. So I just wanted money and to and, and, and get out from where I was staying. But, yeah, my mama heard my stuff, and uh, she was like, baby, you know, that's, that's a little nasty. And I was like, yeah, it is. And now I'm the sir. And it's, I became the sir because I demanded my fucking respect. I wasn't a little nigga no more, so why should I be calling myself a little nigga? <laughs> I could have went OG with it, but royalty. I went with the sir. The OG is, is implied. It comes with the territory. Royalty has spoken. All right, letter O, opportunity. What do you feel like uh, has been your biggest opportunity in music so far? You know, from your beginning to where you're at now, what do you think your biggest opportunity has been? I haven't had it yet. Um. Depends on who, who's weighing the scale. I had a chance to, uh, <coughs> excuse me, I had a chance to go on the road with Jeezy. Uh, and that's my big bro. I had a chance to go on the road with him, but I declined because the timing was wrong. And that's all, nothing more, nothing less. I mean, one might say that, that was big. I met Bone Thugs, man. <laughs> no say it. What, what's been my and, and I kept it real with my with my aunts. I respect they that they was on the job when we was backstage, so I didn't break out and start rapping for them. <laughs> I had that more murder locked and loaded though, but I was ready to hit them with it. You ready? I was ready, but uh, there's no window on my career. There's no ceiling. That's what I meant to say. There's no ceiling on it. So, as long as I can look up, where we going is beyond my thoughts. Cool. Letter P, producer. All right. And what, what I'm getting into with this is the songs that you put out. Mm -hmm. Are they produced by other people? And then <coughs> once you answer that, how do you feel about the way production is going on now in current music, and more particular in rapping and in hip hop? To be honest, uh, I got producers, um, personal producers, but it just depends on how I'm feeling. Uh, like I say, the mixtape killer kind of go with that too. It doesn't matter. When I'm working on a project, it don't matter who made the beat. That's what it is. I might get a you know, one of my fans might reach out and be like, you know, hey, man, as a matter of fact, I just got one. They want me to do do something to Janelle, one of Janelle Monet's songs. It's done. Folks want the crack. <laughs> Sir, gonna give him the crack. Give him the crack. And I'm not concerned about the producer. I mean, uh, so I, I don't know, man. You know, I've heard up-to-date beats. I've heard old-school beats. Uh, music is music to me. When you make timeless music, it, it really doesn't matter when when the track was made. It's 
what you breathe on it. You can always take an old canvas and dust it off and paint a fresher picture, if that makes sense. How do you feel about rappers who go in the studios and basically they're handed the song? They rap on it, but <coughs> talking about they got ghostwriters? That, but also the song's already created. Like the song exists, and they're just coming in and maybe put some verses on it. It's not, they're not the creative process from the beginning to the end. I know for your music, you start, you know, beyond the making the actual beat, you write the lyrics, you come up with the concept, you even do a lot of your own hooks, but yeah. that doesn't happen a lot nowadays. You know, nowadays <coughs> you see a, a song exists, you know, it might exist years before the artist who actually jumps on it. How do you feel about that? Is that really, is that really creating a song for that rapper? I mean, I know some of my answers be out of this world. My queen tell me that all the time, but I mean, you want a hot pocket? Or do you want something fresh out the kitchen? <laughs> I feel like that's enough said. Enough said. I, I mean, say, I feel let like... Them, let them digest that. Your music should be your creativity. You know what I mean? If you're saying it's yours. If I feature on somebody's song, it's their song featuring me. If you feature on my song, it's my song featuring you. But at the end of the day, if it's not... If you're not creating it, I mean, there's money to be made that way, but I'm just cut from a cloth, and it's authentic. And I, I could, I could, I wouldn't even feel right giving my fans something that I said I did and I didn't do it. My fans want that pure lyrical coke. That's what I'm gonna give them. They want that creativity. That's what I'm gonna give them. And like I said, I get credit with credit to do. That's why I pay homage in my music. But uh, I'm my own artist, no doubt. I'm a bone thug descendant. I already told you who I was raised by. So, that's that. All right. Q, quality. How would you compare the quality of the music you put out, the music you create, to the quality of music being put out now? And quality, I guess I'm talking sound quality. Um, but also just lyrically and creativity, man. Well, how do you compare your music to what's also out now, what's being called hot? I'm an outcast. Like Big Boy and Dre. So when these rappers say they hot, I say I'm cold. They say they cold, I say I'm hot. I mean, who's, who's judging it? Who's saying what's hot and what's not? I mean, you know, when it comes to this rap, man, this rap game, it's supposed to be something you were born to do. Everybody wasn't born to rap. And it is what it is. You know what I mean? I mean, everybody wasn't born to rap. So, if you have a gift uh, and you putting out wet shit, then shame on you. <laughs> I mean, I'm just being for real, man. But, uh, you know, some rappers, some artists, they feel like once they get to a certain spot in their career, you know, they feel like, well, at this point, whatever I put out, the fans going to buy. And they do. And that's the fans' fault. But my fans ain't got to worry about that, though. King got them covered. They're fresh. They don't even have to hear it. My fans tell me that. The ones that, you know, get to see me on, not a regular, but when they do see me. With a, with a new shit. Boom. I'm finna put it in the car now. You don't even know what's on now. It don't matter. It's crack. There it is. There it is. Renegade. Do you consider yourself <coughs> a renegade? To the rap gang, I'm a renegade, yeah. Why you say that? Why you feel like to the rap game you are a renegade? Or to hip hop you are a renegade? I think Eminem was on a song with somebody. And he said a renegade ain't afraid to talk about anything. Any fucking thing. So, you know, if I feel a certain way about the way rappers dress, how they look or something, and I say something, if it offend everybody, then fuck I care for. I'm a renegade. Like I, like I said, feel me or kill me. 
And when I start lying, then call me out on my shit. You know what I mean? But, you know, other than that, I guess everything's up for the, for discussion. Are these rappers? Are they real rappers or are they just rappers really good at playing <laughs> acting like rappers? I don't know, man. It's a lot of pretending. That's that's I'm just saying that's that's what a renegade would do. I go to war with any rapper. And that's that's what it is. I mean, I don't feel like there's no best rapper. Everybody who got their own thing should should be able to bring something to the table, but when you got a bunch of the same shit, it's like, what the fuck? If I come sit down to the table to eat, I already got mac and cheese. Why you keep passing me mac and cheese, just a different type of cheese in the mac? I want that first shit baked. Move that shit, but the fans just sit there and eat it. They just sit there and eat it. Hey, if they gonna keep eating it, they gonna keep making it, huh? Demand more from your so-called heroes. And I ain't talking Black Panther and Superman, though. You gotta demand more. All right, sir, S-I-R. Now, we kind of got into this a little bit earlier uh, with some with one of our other questions, but just, you know, a little bit further into it. Why the sir? Why'd you become Sir Nasty? Respect. Love, loyalty, royalty, king shit. I feel like that's enough. Answers my question. All right. T, top five. I just want you to give me your top five rappers and or groups. You know, and it could be a mixture, you know, but just your top five in music. We're talking music, and let, let's let's keep it with rap, or <coughs> however people want to call it. Keep so it with keep, rap. Yeah, let's keep it with rap. Who who are your rap top five? Like I said, we can be we can be talking groups, we can be talking individuals, but who are your top five rappers? Without just sitting down, because to be honest, there's so many real rappers that's it's tough. For, they, they're forgotten. Yeah. So, you know, it's hard, but if I just had to come up with something real quick, a top five as far as groups go, uh Bone Thugs and Harmony. Uh, hands no down. There. Yeah, that's no surprise. <laughs> they could be my five. You feel me? <laughs> yeah. I fuck with them like that. They could hey. be my five, but group wise, like I say, Bone Thugs, um, Outcast, no doubt. Um, shit, man, the Wu Tang Clan. Wow. The Clan. You know how many? Classic. You know. And it's then they and then they then they branched off and then you got old dirty. Come on, man. Um, I rub my home, man, and I honestly feel like Phil Mob is one of the most underrated rap groups Georgia ever has birthed, and I'll say that in front of anybody. Okay. Chevy P, Sean J, the Phil Mob. I, I, I fucks with Phil Mob. 229, All Benny, Big Noah, O.E., Jeff Bones. I got family down there. So, yeah, man. Out, yeah. Feel more of uh, Dirty Boys. It flow. <laughs> Do or Die. Shy Town. Uh, there, there go five, man. I think that's five. There I go five. five NWA. Good. They birthed all of this, so I didn't feel like I had to name them. Yeah, they, <laughs> they automatically just kind of over the They whole automatically. <laughs> if you talking group. Yeah, if we talking group, they started this gangster shit. Hey, that's real. Yeah. What about uh, solo artists? Who, who would be on your top five as far as, um, just, you know, who you listen to? Who, who, you, the who un- you really just mess with hard? The honest truth, if, I had to, if we're doing solo, it's going to have to be me. Yeah, I said it. I'm, I'm, I'm my biggest fan, or I would have been quick. Me, Sir Nasty, Tupac, Big, Uncle Scarface, and uh, I'm going to say Eminem. 
and not in that order, but I'm, I'm definitely at the top of my five. Ain't nothing wrong right with that. Why? Definitely. Why not? I mean, I don't know, because I'm a man first. There you go. So, Sir Nasty, I would say Pac and Big, because I, I like respecting the dead, but, I mean, you can toss them up any way you want after me, though, if we talking my top five. That's your top five. I respect it. You, underground. What does it mean to you, <coughs> and what does it mean to your music, the word underground? Underground is uh, basically either industry, mainstream, or you underground. Or you don't know where you are or where you're trying to go, so you're still in the developmental stages. Of course, that's just my opinion. I feel like the mainstream is the pop rappers or the rappers that try to go pop. I don't know what the fuck they're doing. I don't even listen to the radio like that. But from what I've been seeing from new stuff and from uh, old stuff, you know, old music back in the day, like 90s, early 2000s, I said all that to say this. Mainstream is like the MC Hammers, the Vanilla Ices, the, the Young MCs. That was mainstream. Today, I guess mainstream would be whoever you see at the award shows. The, whatever rappers are at the iHeartRadio, whatever rappers are at, uh, I'm guessing BET Awards. I don't fucking know. I guess that would be mainstream. I'm guessing industry would be the rappers whose stuff is on the radio, maybe. They didn't, you know, cut a night check to the program director or something. They got something going. Maybe they packing a few clubs here and there. So a few... A few people know about them. Maybe that's industry. And then you got underground. The underground are the people who said, you know, well, I'm not going to kiss the radio station ass, nor are they going to pick my single. So this is the single. It's clean. If you don't play it, the hell with it. I put it out in the streets. Mm -hmm. I, that's underground. And I feel like I'm an underground king. But what makes us special is we worldwide. Underground worldwide, I dig it. V, vices. What bad habits <coughs> would you say you still have? We're not, we're not going to talk about the past. But what bad habits do you feel like you still have? Uh, just in general, man. Just stuff that you do that you feel like, you know, you you can you can look in the mirror and say, yeah, I probably need to change that. Cause it takes a man to do that to be able to look in the mirror and say, yeah, that probably ain't the right thing to be doing. What you what you feel like you got? I mean. I we all <clears throat> got vices. Some got more than others. Uh, as far as myself, you know, it's stuff I need to uh, be delivered from, but that's between me and God, not my fans. Um, something that I can check myself on and have been is, uh, I'm one of them people now, I feel like I have to remind people of shit. You know, like if I had an altercation with somebody and I chose to turn the other cheek and the outcome of it was I looked pussified or something, that bothers me. And that's weird because I don't give a fuck what people think about me, but I just don't want you to think. You got something more. <laughs> I just don't want, I just don't ever want you, if, if you know, especially if it's beef, you know, something like that. I just, I always feel like, I gotta prove something to you. Now I really don't. I'm hurting my haters right now. And, I, I, and that's that's my thing. I be wanting to hurt them physical sometimes. But you know, my father working on me, so it's, if I had it my way, I'd have been in jail for life. If I'd have had it my way. I know the feeling. W. WWE wrestling. Yeah. Are you a fan? Mm. I want to say more like family. <laughs> Why you, you say that? I mean, I say that because uh, it shouts out to my fans. Uh, I consider my fans family. I, I, meant, I, meant, I meant to say that. That's why I can't go through something and not put it on a record for my fans because my family care about me and, you know, I want my family to know what's going on with me. So with that being said, yeah, I've been a fan of WWE since, well, wrestling since uh, 80-something. 
I had to be like four or five years old. Uh, my father showed it to me. I, I haven't stopped watching it since. I've taken breaks. But they get silly now. They get coon they get coonery with it, but they're my people and you know, I don't think they even know no better with half of the shit they be doing, so but I've been a fan since the eighties, man. Still fucking with it. Uh It is what it is, you know. I'm a fan also myself. I just throw that out there. No one doubt. Of the things where I'm a, <coughs> I feel like I'm a cradle to the grave fan. I, I'll be watching WWE till I'm dead. Till I'm dead. No, it is what it is. Till I'm dead. All right. X. <coughs> I went with the word X factor. Okay. What do you think makes you different from the millions and millions? Shout out to The Rock of <laughs> other right. rappers. Because nowadays, I mean, I, I've said it before, man. You can throw a rock and hit a rapper. Right. If I threw a rock in this cemetery, there's chances are I would hit somebody who says they're a rapper. Right. What makes you different? What's your X factor, man? I don't know if it's my X factor, uh, but I will say this, just speaking on behalf of me and the sir. Um, when you different, like really different, and you embrace that with your real life and your music, that sets you apart from anybody that's doing anything that you're doing. Uh, we came up gothic. Marilyn Manson, Isaiah Osborne, System of a Down, Nirvana, you know. And I, ra I was raised up in a real hood. Shots out to the 3600 block. So, you know, they want to know what the fuck I was smoking and how long I've been smoking it. Because they said that was white people music. There's no such thing as black and white music. It's different cultures listening to different stuff when you come up a certain way. But like I said, when you when you your own person, when you unique, when you cut from that cloth, real fuck with real. I heard real music and fuck with it. Um, so what separate me from other artists? I mean, it might be other artists that feel that way, but because most of my music, 90% of it is coming from places I've been, a, a real place. And it's timeless. It doesn't matter when I put it out. It's still gonna, gonna ride and do what it's supposed to do, reach who it's supposed to reach. Well, who can tell my story better than me? So I, that's gonna always have me in my own lane, doing my own thing. Well, Martin said, I ain't gonna let uh, uh, VH1 tell my shit. Yeah, I ain't gonna let VH1 <laughs> tell my story. I, I tell you now. Tell my own damn story. But a record can't tell you. You can only put so many songs <laughs> on one thing. On one why. project. This one's going to be a little out there, but... Dude! Let me tell you where I'm going with this. Because <laughs> that, that can mean anything. Yeah, because I ain't dancing for shit. I, I'm glad. Yeah. I, I feel like I would get up and walk away. Yeah, well. How do you feel about... And I'm, I'm lumping a lot of these together because I feel like they're all part of passing trends in hip-hop, but... Crunk, snap, auto tune, and what they're calling trap music. Hmm. How do you feel about it? Um, and thinking about it, just in comparison to what you do, because a lot of times people expect you to be doing what's going on around them. How do you feel about that compared to what you do? I never sold dope, so I'm not a trapper. I got niggas that trap, but I can't make music for them. I made music for me, and my fans want to hear the story. I mean, I'm sure. I can go to the trap right now and them niggas probably got some of that, that stupid shit bumping. But you know, that's that's the game. Crunk music never really went anywhere. People just stopped being crunk. They started doing other shit. Mosh pit, slam dance, shout out to Onyx. That's crunk shit. It is. You know what I mean? Jumping stage diving, that's crunk shit. You gotta be crunk to stage dive. You gotta be crunk to sh smash your good talk. Uh, what I do is horror music, though. Uh, we do songs for the ladies. You know, we do song, songs where we want to have fun. You know, do songs for the strippers. Uh, and, and so on, so on. We, 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 we shoot at everything when we rap. But it all comes from the murder house. And the murder house was built on top of the graveyard. The graveyard is the cemetery. 
Jason Voorhees. It all, it's, it's all, it, it all ties in like that. That's why it always come back to horror niggas. Just so you motherfuckers won't call it something it ain't. Is it nasty shit? Them bitches horror music. Horror music. Remember that name? It's not hip hop. I feel like we should have ended it there, but we got one more letter. We got Z. So I'm going to go ahead and go with Z. I got zero Fs given. The Fs, I, you know what the Fs is for. I know. I don't the have F to say for. it. But zero Fs given. What are some things that people just seem to care so much about that you just don't? Just off the top of your head, things you can think of that people put a whole lot of value in <coughs> that you just, you don't, you don't put the same value into. I don't value motherfuckers' opinions. About mm. me, mm. I don't give a fuck about validation, but that goes it goes hand in hand f- f- from anybody. Like when I put music out, I don't give a fuck how the people around me feel about it, or the people that's gonna receive it feel about it. I give a fuck about the people that wants to receive it, how they gonna feel about it. I don't give a fuck if you don't think, uh, as they call it, I'm hood enough. I made it out my hood. A lot of niggas didn't. I made it out mentally and physically. So the only way to see if a nigga's a real hood nigga is to do some hood shit and to run up on him. As they say, I heard I heard one of my young niggas say, say less. Now how I feel about that, what I just said. Um, and I don't give a fuck about anybody judging me. I called myself Mr. I don't give a fuck a long time ago. It's another mixtape you can look up. And uh I remain the same about that. Uh that's 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 pretty much my life. God first. Then my family, then myself, then my music, then my niggas. My fans, y'all fit in with my family. So, as long as you're not fucking with any of those things I just named, I don't give a fuck about what you're doing because I'm too busy doing what the fuck I'm doing. And that's making sure. All those items, all those people, all those things I just named that I care about. Just making sure they good. That's what we do it for, right? We want to feed our family. Fuck being famous. Fuck being famous. There you have it. That's, that is what it is. This has been a walk through the graveyard with Sir Nasty. Uh, I appreciate anybody who's watching. Um, I appreciate certain ass for coming out and keeping it 100 with y'all the same way uh, he keeps it 100 in the music. Uh, we, we plan on doing this uh, often, often enough, you know, kind of like we talked about on the very first question. We're not social media whores. Right. So we're not going to be doing these every day. Right. Every week even. But, you know, every month, every couple months we may go to a different location and just chop it up because it's our way of getting with people in a way that's uh, not directly with the music, you know? Right. If you want to hear what's going on with certain Nasty with Graveyard Entertainment, the music is always there. You know, I'm one of five that, you know, work the Graveyard Entertainment Twitter, so if you want to know what we're thinking, that's always there. You know, certain Nasty got an Instagram, but don't expect him to be on there 24-7. Telling all his business <laughs> for the world. You want to know about him? Go get the music. iTunes, Spotify, Tidal, Google Play, Amazon, wherever you listen to music, SoundCloud, Sir Nasty is there. And you can type in the name, or you can go to one of the many uh, social media sites, and you can just click a link. You know, get the music, download, stream it, whatever. But it's quality music. We as Graveyard Entertainment, we stand behind it. He is the flagship of Graveyard Entertainment. If you don't know what a flagship is, that means he's the head of it. Our product is music. He's that main product. Sir Nasty, horror music, not hip hop. Shouts out to everybody in Germany who been fucking with the music. I'm coming home, but I'm just coming to visit. Berlin, baby.